What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about two guitars. They are guitars that measure 23 and a half inch scale length. And that means from there to there. That's 23 and a half inches. To the 12th fret, right, it's 20, it's almost 12 inches. You see that? 11 to 3 quarters. So that scale length is, some people refer to it as Birdland scale, but it's, the frets are closer. The frets are closer. 25 and 3 quarters is Gibson scale. Uh, and then there's 25 and a half, which is like Fender. And uh, so it makes a big difference. Now, this particular guitar is a Epiphone Elitis. And uh, I got this guitar on a trade I, uh, uh, from a guy uh, in my hometown. I went and met him and traded him a guitar for I, and a couple of things. And this guitar needed serious help. There was missing a pick guard. Um, it was... The electronics in it, when I plugged it in, just sounded terrible. Now, I had one of these before, and I was never happy with the sound of it. So, uh, I changed pickups to these in that um, TV Jones. I went for these TV Jones pickups, and that was a nice pickup, and it sounded a lot better than what was in it. Now, this particular Elitis, if you can take a look in the back, it's got stamped right at the very top of the headset, the headset, headstock. I don't know if you, can you see that? It says used, <laughs> used. So it's got the serial number, but then right up here it says used. Now, I don't know who put that there. I assume it was the factory. So I'm looking at the guitar. I'm thinking, why did they do that? Well, here's my conclusion. The body, the neck, the tuners are all perfect. Now, what they didn't do on this is they didn't have a pick guard. Well, they had a, well, they did have a pick guard. But it turns out it's not the right pick guard that later became finalized with the model. It wasn't the right pick guard. It's not the right tailpiece. It's a reasonable facsimile. It's not a Birdland tailpiece. It's close. It's not a Birdland foot with the engraving in here on the bridge. So... Also, I think the wiring, I'm going to show you the wiring because it's really crappy. Um, the wiring was terrible too. So let me show you. The pots were cheap, about the cheapest pots you can get. Here's the wiring that we took out of here. No stranded wiring, right? There's... A cheap, see this cheap switch, cheap ass switch, and look at these pots. Just, just cheap little pots. The the when I got it, the pickup rings were broke. Um, as you can see, the stem on this pot it broke. Um, the uh, even even the, this little is something as simple as this was just cheap, so all this wiring and stuff was really to terrible, and that's why. And here's the pickups. Now I think the pickups are your standard. If you can see on there, where do you want to go? Right here. These are the standard pickups, but. 
even with the standard pickups, um, like I said, I never liked the tone of it. It was too tinny. So I had a friend of mine install two Schaller pickups. Now, Schaller's are probably the most, uh, I'm going to say, least high end or it's got a, a nice low end mid range boost. And so I had him install them, those pickups. So these are shallower pickups. And if you can see the, the uh, you see the uh, uh, pickup covers, they're worn out. Okay. So a standard Gibson pickup cover will fit the shallers. So I, uh, I've got those on order. <laughs> so I want to change those. Uh, so I've got CTS pots in here, a real good Switchcraft switch, a real good Switchcraft uh, jack, CTS pots, the nice uh, um, orange uh, capacitors, all shielding, shielded wiring, and this puppy now sounds pretty damn good. You know, because the, the scale length is shorter, you know, the pickup uh, is closer to the bridge, for one. Uh, the string in is, is, isn't as long, so it's a lot of them have a tinnier sound. All bird lands, I don't care if it's a Gibson or what, they're going to sound a little tinnier or... So it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want really easy playing? Or do you want a really super good sound? Well, you want both. So, but this short scale can make chords like this doable. And I had one of these when my hand went to, went to hell. And uh, now my hand is, is back now it's in heaven and so but look at that isn't that a beautiful beautiful guitar and let's check out the flame on this in the wood come on kid. by the way I have to install my strap button in the back there it drives me nuts having it up here it just pulls on you, but look at the flame on this. So the reason it's stamped second is the electronics, in my opinion, and some of the hardware. The actual body, you know, it's made in Japan. It's nice wood, beautiful wood, beautiful sounding wood. By the way, I raised the pickups off the top too with the little washers. One's rolling around inside there. Um, so it's a beautiful solid spruce top, no cracks or anything. And uh, so there it is. That's an, a Birdland Elitis Epiphone. So anyway, just wanted to show you that because we're going to do a comparison on another guitar. Uh, I might as well do it now, huh, Wes? You might as well grab that other one since we're in the mode here. Um, this next one is a called a Midtown, and it's kind of a crazy guitar. It's short scale, thin body. It's it's hollow chamber body, mahogany. It's kind of like a Gibson Chet Atkins guitar. But it's got a mahogany neck, which they do, 11 sixteenths nut, and it's got the L5 headstock. It's rosewood fretboard, beautiful frets. And again, pickup covers that probably should be replaced. I bought some for this, and I they didn't fit. And so, which says don't ever buy even though they say they're if they're too cheap uh, these were like 12 bucks for two 
And I bought them in the past, and usually they fit. But in this case, they didn't fit. So now I bought some others that were two for 60. <laughs> so they're a lot more money. But this guitar is very interesting. It's, uh, again, the short scale, which is very comfortable. I don't have any problem, even with chords. You know, some people say, oh, you can't play chords up here on it. Well, I, I had no problem with it. And uh, so I've played short scale guitars before. And it's not a problem. That's a pretty sound, huh? Got a nice little tone ring to it. Light, a lot of sustain. Now what's funny about this guitar is you think that this is a trapeze tailpiece that moves up and down. It's not. It's like welded low right here. So one of the things you want to see with a short scale guitar is a lot of string length. Believe it or not, the length back here has, has to do with the flexibility of each string here. So if you like it a little more flexible so you can put a heavier string on, then you want the tailpiece to be a little bit shorter. I wish they would have made this tailpiece, you know, just an inch shorter, but that's okay. They know what you're doing. Who do we got here? Timothy. What's happening? Hi, Tim. And Kirby. Kirby, what's up, guy? And Derek, hello from Ireland. Wow. And to to see uh, to see my hello from Berlin. Isn't that amazing? Wow. International man of mystery. So anyway, this is a Midtown Gibson Midtown. Isn't that a trippy guitar and i have a feeling it'd be a real nice guitar for blues i really do you could really bend the crap out of this uh these strings when did they make that guitar um, what year is it this is And then how, what about the Epiphone? I, I don't know what year that is. Um, but it's in f really fine shape. So it's, it's like the body. There's no dings on it or anything. It's really sweet. So as far as guitars, uh, if you're thinking that, you know, I'd like to have a short scale guitar because my hands hurt or I don't have I have little hands or uh, any of those reasons you know you might consider a short scale guitar like I said I've had a couple of them my hand got better I ended up getting rid of them and then I, I go back and I think wow well, why did I do that then Hear the high end sparkle on that? Um, as far as guitars, I'm going to be getting in a, a um, Aria Pro 2 to Pro 2 Herbellus soon. So we're going to take a look at that. That's always a guy had one at camp and I thought, man, that guitar sounds good. So anyway, Ed from Central Wisconsin. I just ordered a mixer, Wes, from Wisconsin. 
to replace the one that I take on those live gigs. Right. I ordered one of these, uh, but only eight channel. Nice. Okay, let's play a tune with this. Wes, watch out for this volume because it's going to be. What uh, strings do you have on those? Oh, my regular gauge, you know, the richest gauge, which is the 13, 15, 20, 28, 38, 48, in a wound, round, wound, flat wound, flat wound, not a round wound, a flat wound string. So you got the same strings on both? Yes. Okay. Now, I, in hindsight, I probably should put, because I think this would be a good blues guitar. It's good. So I'm, maybe I had to string it like that. And you guys probably know that... that um, that I string uh, things a little weird, and I found a, a, a set, that, um, a string combination that I think works really good. You take nines and eights and you mix them together. You, from the top of the set, you put the two, the E to B string from the nines, all the rest are from the eights, and the bottom one's from the nine. <laughs> it's a bitchin' set. So that's what I'm going to do and start doing that. Oh, yeah, what were we doing? Christmas tracks. So this song we're going to do here is Jingle Bells, kind of in a bluesy thing. And it's from the uh, course that I have called Instant Christmas, which basically is the premise. These are easy songs to play. you got beautiful tracks. Why not make your own Christmas music? And just have some fun playing some Christmas music. Yeah, this is called Instant Christmas. Jingle bells minus the lead guitar. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
that fun? That's a fun little thing, man. So uh, every every uh, live stream, we're going to play a couple Christmas songs. And then by the time Christmas rolls around, we'll have played about 18 of them. Are you going to play Jingle Bells on that thing then? No, I was going to play Jingles, the, the Wes Montgomery song. Oh. Well, I thought you were comparing these two. Oh, okay. Well, let me play some. Uh, I'll play some more blues on this. Then that's fun. Yeah, or I don't know. It seems like you should play the same thing. has a little more percussive pop to its attack. Hi, Rich here again. I just wanted to say thanks for checking out my videos. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and sign up for those notifications so you can see all the cool guitar videos we put out each week. If you want more lessons right now, I have hundreds of them at guitarcollegelibrary.com. Check out our low price monthly streaming memberships. And if you want to learn jazz, check out my course, Jazz Guitar Improv. I take beginner jazz players and get them playing awesome solos on the fly. You'll see the link for the JGI course in the description below. Hey, thanks again for watching my channel. We'll see you again real soon with a new video.